everybody, my name is Trisha Geizon. I own Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio here in Montgomery, Pennsylvania. I've been beading for approximately 15 years. I started beading as a form of therapy for my chronic illness. I am also a brand ambassador for Jesse James Beads, and I thoroughly enjoy that. I am a YouTuber where I do instructional uh, jewelry videos, quick tips, and haul videos. I also have an Etsy store, the same name, Pink Poodle Studio, Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. Um, that store has been really fun to run. Um, as everyone knows, you have your good days and your bad with your sales, but I encourage myself daily to get up and get things done. Even if I'm doing photos, if I'm uploading a post, if I'm posting on social media, I try to push through every day to accomplish something. I want to show you guys what we're going to be doing today for our project. This is made with Sari Silk Chain and the Swiss Chard Bead Mix from Jesse James Beads. It is a fairly simple design, but it does contain some wire work. We're going to be doing a lot of wrap loops and some wire wrapping as well. This is also our earrings that we're going to tackle. This is the basic design, guys. Now, no, these are just our inspiration pieces for what we're going to be doing. Uh, today, we're going to be using a different bead mix and some other items, but it's all the same. You can use anything that you have at home or anything that you get from Jesse James Beads will work just fine. So I guess that's it, guys. Without further ado, let's get started with our project. I'm super excited. Okay, guys. So let's get started. Let's start by going over our supply list. We're going to need a mini mix. This one is in Mars Capone. Some fire polish. This is 8 millimeter pearlized white. A focal. And you're going to need a clasp. 14 8 millimeter jump rings. And I just have some oval jump rings here to use, like if I need for, oops, attaching the clasp or something like that. Some 22 gauge wire. This is Beadalon uh, German wire. And you're going to need 14, excuse me, 16, six inch lengths of that cut. I have these clasps here, or these um, clamps here that I got. These are just from the Dollar Tree. These make it easier when you are going to be wire wrapping the chain onto the fairy silk. And speaking of, we need some fairy silk, a 12 inch piece of a larger linked chain. And then as far as tools, we're going to need a pair of scissors to cut our fairy silk when we're ready. Wire straighteners, flush cutters. I use my tweezer pliers, round nose, chain nose, and then I take a heavier duty pair of pliers so I don't have to use my flush cutters on the chain and then the bent chain nose if I wouldn't happen to need those. So that is the lineup, guys, what we're going to need. So. I'm going to set these aside because I already have these opened up and put into bowls. I'm going to set a few of these things off because we're not quite ready for them yet. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to start with is getting our pendant ready. Now there's a few things that you can do with your pendant. You can wire wrap beads onto it. You can leave it as is. Just put fibers on it, put tassels on it, anything that makes you happy, you decorate your focals however you see fit. For me, I'm gonna just leave it simple. I like it just simple because we're gonna have a lot going on on this necklace. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two of our eight millimeter jump rings and the reason I'm using two is because I like the presence that two jump rings gives versus one. It just makes the bail look, if you're just going simple, it just gives it a little bit more girth and gives it, I don't know, 
a nicer appearance in my opinion. So we're just going to do two of those. Sometimes I would do three if it'll fit through the pendants just to kind of give it a boost. Okay, so we got those put on, as you can see there. And remember, when you're opening and closing your jump rings, always go front to back, guys. Never open them out outwardly because you're going to ruin your jump ring every time. So we have our focal ready to go there. That was the easiest part. We're going to set our little uh, clasp back there. And we're going to get started making our droplets for our necklace, our dangles, if you will. So what I'm going to do for our dangles, I'm going to make my own head pins. Now what you can do is use ready-made head pins. That'll work just as easily. But I prefer the look of the handmade head pins. So what we're going to do with those is we're going to start out. <clears throat> and these have both been flush cut on either end. Or the ends of the wire have been flush cut. And you're going to take your round nose plier. You're going to grab at the very end tip of that and you're going to roll it in you're going to roll it th around twice completely around and you see where my end is lining up with where we started okay once you do that you're going to take your chain nose or your tweezer pliers in this case and you're going to grab onto your loop just like so and you're going to bring it so it is vertical. You're going to move it so it is vertical above the circles that you just made. If you can see that, guys. Hopefully it's focusing. And then you're going to take that end and push it through the circles that you made. Just like this. You're going to want to make sure and do an arch to go in there so your, your wire does not get kinked. So as you push that through, I just leave a little bit of a circle, kind of straighten it out there. Then you want to make sure, and you're using your wire straighteners down close to the knot. And then you're going to take your chain nose pliers and just pull. And as you're pulling, don't hold, don't hold terribly tight on your um, wire straighteners because if you do, nothing's going to budge. So you just want to be able to use it. And I'm going to start up here to straighten this a little bit, but. You just want to be able to use it to push. Pull on this, on your chain nose, push on your nylon jaw. Okay, so there's our head pin. There it goes. And that's just a simple way to make your own head pins at home out of a wire that you already have. So we're going to make a few more of these. And when I say a few more, I mean 12, 11 more. <laughs> So let's do a few more slowly. And we're just going to grab the end of that. And we're going to wrap it around twice on top of each other. And we're going to bring it up to the end where we started. Grab it with your pliers. Bring the wire vertical. Take the wire and do an arch and push it through those rings, just like so, okay? And again, our nylon jaws, our chain nose, and we're going to pull with our chain nose and push with our nylon jaws. There you go. Another one. Okay. Okay. Let's do one more slow, and then I'm going to just get them knocked out for you. So you don't have to watch me do all of these nice and slow. So we're going around twice. Stopping where we started. Grabbing the loops. Vertical. Make your wire vertical. Get these out of the way so you can make sure and see that better. Then we're going to make an arch and put our wire through the rings that we made. Pull it part of the way. Put your nylon jaw pliers on there and pull with your 
chain nose, push with your nylon jaw. Ooh, and that happens sometimes where you're pulling and pushing so hard your um, chain nose come off the end. So, so basically I'm just gonna straighten that up there. And there you go, guys. All right, so let me do the rest of these quickly. Okay, so now that we have all of our head pins prepared, we're going to start making our dangles. And basically, again, this is your preference, how you want to design it, but I'm going to show you what I like the look of. So basically what I like to do is I lay my sari silk out, or my fairy silk, so I can get a look at it, and then lay my chain on top of it so I can see exactly how things are going to look. So that kind of gives me a guide for how I want my um, head pins to look in my dangles. So basically, we're just going to get started with that. Let's put, let's start our first one out. We're going to put a little one of these gold balls on there, one of these spacers. Okay. And then I'm going to put one of these. These are pretty. These rondelles are very pretty. And maybe one of these flower spacers and our little fleur de lis. And that can be our first one. So as I do them, move these here. I like to lay them out here because I like to do a matching one on either side. So then as you go out the necklace, you have the symmetry of matching. Again, I mean, if that's something that you want to do, you want to go asymmetry, you want to do um, different ones on, every si on each side, that's your preference, guys. But this is what we're going to work on today anyway, this symmetry part. Okay, so that. And what I like to do is I get all of my pins, my head pins designed first. Then I go back, just as I did all the loops at one time, I go back and then do the wire wrap loops all at one time. It just seems like that works better for me for my process. Of, so I don't have to just keep putting down, using my tools, putting those down just seems to go a little easier for me. So let's do, let's do one of these really pretty teardrop beads. And this is just let your imagination run wild, guys, is what this is. Let's do one of these pretty stone beads. And maybe just like a, one of these off-white rondelles kind of just give it a a neutral look. Let's do another one of those. You know what? I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to take that top bead off and put a um, one of these round spacers in there. There we go. Put a little metal in there and I do like the look of that better. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so Rondell, a stone bead. That one's a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. 
one of our gold spacer beads and another rondelle. And you can also take your pendant and put it in the middle here to give you the idea of what things are going to look like. I guess I forgot to put the chain here, so <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. Put that down and then you can kind of see the whole picture of how things are going to come along. All right, so let's move on to another head pin. I think we're going to start incorporating some brown. I think I'm going to move these two out and put two in the middle here. And this is a really nice way. It helps you lay things out so you can make sure that everything's going to hang just right for you. So let's put some brown. Oh, let's put this really pretty cut rondelle on there. And a spacer. What else do we want? And this is just how I do it, guys. I just kind of play with it and fly by the seat of my pants a little bit. And it's fun. It's fun to do it that way. So there's some with a little bit of brown. Okay, and we'll repeat that. Okay. And you can see that. So that, you can see, that kind of gives you a little bit better of a balance without being all the cream color right there. So I think, and then we're going to go with um, some more brown out here for the next two on the outside. It's all about balance. So let's use these fleur-de-lis, but we're going to put those on the bottom this time. See how this looks. <clears throat> Let's put one of these beautiful brown pearls. And one of our beautiful spacer beads. And then a cream bead on that. This mix is just gorgeous, guys. I can't get over how pretty this is. Okay. Again, we're just repeating that. Spacer and another rondelle. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting there. We have now four per side. We have two on each side left. So what I think I want to do, I'm looking at these spacers here that are super cool. They almost look like a crown when they're upside down, but they're really pretty. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to incorporate those for sure. So I'm going to take one of our gold spacer beads here, and I'm going to put these beautiful, almost, <laughs> they look like disco balls to me. They're so, so shiny and beautiful. So we'll put that on there and we're going to take our bead cap that we were just looking at and put that on and you can see how this bead cap will move around a little bit on the top of that what you need to do to keep that from happening is take a bead that'll fit nicely inside of it put it on and push it down into the center of that and I don't know if you can see that but that keeps it from moving around for you so we'll do that and let's do we need one more thing on top let's try no I think I want to do yeah let's do the gold bead and I just realized I'm not even using my fire polish. We will have to go back and change that. Let's just take that off, what I just put on, and we're gonna put that fire polish on to stabilize that bead cap. Yeah, that just makes it beautiful. We need to sneak a few more of those in there. They really do make things beautiful. Okay, so again, we're going to go 
circle bead. I mean, and you're seeing my creative process here, guys. I, I like to kind of fly by the seat of my pants, take the inspiration as it comes. Okay, so we're going to put another one of those disco balls on our spacer and our fire polish. And I think what I'm going to do is these two brown ones that we made here, I'm going to add a piece of fire polish on top of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That just made it. <laughs> yeah, don't forget your fire polish, guys. Okay. So now we have those, and then we have one more per side left. So for our balance, I think we may need to do these brown beads on the outside just to give us a nice balance of everything so let's see what we're gonna do here let's put let's put one of these rondelles on okay just one of these milky rondelles and then we will take these rows no let's put our brown bead on and let's put these floral spacer on next so that's what we have so far. You see that? And then I think I'm going to put this really pretty, almost peachy, dark cream color rondelle on top. I really like that. And I don't know. I think that would be good. I think that looks really nice. So we'll put that together. Let's put the other one together now. So we had one of the milky rondelles there, the brown one, the rose, flower spacer, and another rondelle on top. Same thing. Okay guys, so we got that. I'm gonna just put these leftover beads in the bowl, I have al already pulled out the beads I want to use for my earrings, so those are setting off to the side. So the next thing we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to do a bunch of wrap loops. If you've never done a wrap loop, loop, let me tell you, they're fairly simple once you get the hang of them. It does. It did take me a little while to learn them when I was first starting, but once you do, that's pretty much all I use. But a lot of people like simple loops. Uh, it's just not... I like the way wrap loops look. They look more finished. They look more professional, in my opinion. So basically, you're going to put your chain nose pliers at the top. And you saw that I did a horizontal bend there. It's a 90 degree. You're going to take your round nose pliers. Put that in there underneath that bend. And whenever you put your pliers in, and you can see where I'm putting it, that's going to be a fairly small... Um, loop but you can make your loops as big or as, as small as you want just by where you decide to place your round nose, ply, round nose pliers into that bend so basically we're, we have our pliers up and down here on our angle let me give you a little bit better look there guys and then you're gonna for me personally this is how I do it and I'll turn these so you can see this I take the wire up and over then I turn my pliers so they are laying flat. Then I bring that underneath and I give it a little straighten. Okay. Then I'm going to take those round nose pliers out. I'm going to put in my chain nose. I'm going to grab that loop securely because we don't want that loop moving around. And then we're just going to wrap around. Okay, well, that's what we got so far, guys. Trim that. You wanna get in there and flush cut that nice and close. If I can get my flush cutter in there. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna take my tweezer plier and squeeze that down so it's not sticking out. It moved on me just a smidge there. Okay, so that's our first wrap loop. <laughs> All right, let's go over that a few more times. So here's our 
head pins that we made with our dangles and I put my chain nose pliers in there bend to a 90 degree angle oops there you go guys and then put in our round nose pliers in that same area so your, your loops are kind of matching then up and over the top I spin my pliers to the side go across okay see that and then grab with our chain nose pliers and wrap around usually three times is a good amount I find usually and with whoop, there we went with designing, um, I've always found that odd numbers usually looks better. So let's say we have six per side on here, which are even, but then we have our focal in the middle that makes seven or seven, no matter how you look at your necklace. <clears throat> okay. There's that one looking good. Let's walk through one more slow. Whoops, I was using these ones. I get ahead of myself. Chain those. 90 degree bend. Brown nose. Up and over. Move your pliers across. Pull your wire across your loop there. Grab with your chain nose pliers and wrap. All right, guys, so I'm going to get the rest of these done quickly. So I don't hold you here all day. This is um, a, a little bit of a time consuming project, but it's well worth it, in my opinion. You get a really nice look from it oops our chain's getting up in our business there okay now guys if you want a quicker way without picking up and putting down your tools so much um I was given a plier at the last Speed Fest. Of course, that wasn't 2020. That was 2019 by Wyatt White from Beadalon. And get this. I'm just kind of pushing this down here. Let me grab it here as I'm sitting here looking. This is actually his double tool, which has the chain nose and the round nose on it which makes it nice. I mean, you can just flip it around in your hand here instead of putting down and picking up. So let's try doing a few with that just to give you the idea. So we used our chain nose. Then we're gonna flip around to our round nose, up and over, turn, pull it across, back again to our chain nose. And it does save, save time, as you can see. Whoops, dropped it, guys. Sorry. It does save time, as you can tell by... I mean, I, that went much faster, didn't it? So, you have options. You have options. Yeah, I mean, I like this tool a lot. I just... A lot of times I just forget that I have it up there. and Especially when I'm doing... Um, a lot of wrap loops and things and I do like my tweezer plier to push the ends in on my wrap loops but yeah really convenient it does go pretty slick there doesn't it but it's all in your comfort level, guys. Whatever tool you like to use. And see, you just kind of, we all just get used to <laughs> what we use. And it's hard to make changes with tools. So 
let's trim this. And then I'm just pushing that down. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my old standby here, but you know, if you're interested in that tool, I mean, give it a try if you think you might like it. So now what I'm going to do, I'll pull these little pieces of wire off to the side here, is put our jump rings on to our um, dangles here. Because to me then it's easier once I start assembling, I can just pop it through. So let's do that quick. I know these first three steps have been pretty tedious, but it is once we put these jump rings on, then most of the tedious work is out of the way. But give you a nice piece in the end, you know, just looks very put together, very handmade. If I can grab my jump rings here. Let's go like this. makes life a little bit easier and don't forget when you're opening and closing your jump rings we're going front to back and you want to kind of work them together until you hear that little click yeah that's sometimes it does that and sometimes it doesn't but it um always always make sure that you're doing front to back here and that's what I consider front to back, front to back, not side to side. Side to side is going to, um, there's your click, distort your jump ring for you. Okay. Get this one. You can see this is a little bit not straight, so I'm just kind of taking my fingers and getting that straightened out. And you can even take these little knots and press them flat to the bottom of your beads to really just give it a nice look. And once these are ready, we will start attaching them.
and we already have our jump rings on our focal. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Sorry guys, I have to turn my fan on. It's getting a little bit warm in here right now. I have to have my door closed because if not, we'll be hearing, we'll be having entertainment from my dogs. That's just a given usually. <laughs> Although they've been all right so far, but we shall see. We live, uh, we live in town, although we have a nice big backyard and a creek in our backyard. We live in town and our house is up toward the front of our property where, you know, the sidewalk runs <clears throat> in front of the house there. And my girls think that it's their sidewalk. So if anybody is walking down remotely close to our house, you know, they feel like they have to protect it and, you know, tell, tell them to get off their sidewalk. And during the day, people are active, you know, the mailman and sometimes, you know, kids or neighbors are walking down the road. So it can be entertaining, that's for sure. So, all right, last jump ring here, guys. So now guys, when we are going to be putting, I'm just going to set this stuff back to the side here, out of the way, so we have some room to groove, a piece of wire in there, put those in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our chain, we're going to find the center of it, which gives us about that loop right, oops, I moved it of course, let's do it this way, okay. So let's go with this loop right here. And we're gonna start putting our, uh, attaching our jump rings in our dangles here. So we'll do our first jump ring. Into the chain. And then we're just gonna be working to space these out down the chain. Okay, sorry if I pull that too close to me, guys. I get into making a project, and I don't know if you guys do that too, and you just bring it up, and, you know, the older we get, the closer we need things to be to our eyes, you know, so. <laughs> All right. Sorry if I seem a little bit not coordinated here. I kind of... Um, can have days like that with my hands, so. But it's all good. All right, so we have our middle put right there. All right. So then we're going to start working our way out. So I'm gonna kind of just lay these out to give you an idea, to give myself an idea of where I want them to be spaced so I can make sure and have everything where I want it. I don't want to, I don't want one right on top of this focal. I want to make sure that we're giving enough space. So I think I'm going to do like every other as we go up here. And that seems to work well. There you go. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go, we're gonna count from the pendant. I'm leaving one, two, I'm leaving two from the pendant over. And on that third one, we're gonna start, okay? So we'll put this one on the third link. Oops, went there. So we went three over. 
there we go. That's that one. And we're just going to continue to add our links. If I can get that to hang right, there we go. So there's two. And front to back on our jump rings there. And this just gives you a really nice airy look. Really nice for spring. And you can use any material that you want to weave through the jump rings. As long as you have space for it, you can use it. Okay. Almost there on this side. And this just makes it, when I put my jump rings on ahead, that's my personal preference, guys. I just like to have everything right there. I can pop it open. <clears throat> and put them on. Two more. If I can find that again with the eyes and the old. <laughs> again with the eyes and the old. There we go. The problem is I have, I'm nearsighted, I guess. So what that means is, and I'm sure you all know this, but. I can't see far away, but I can see up close. Well, it's like right in this range here between my face and my mat that is just a little bit blurry unless I bring it up fairly close to my face. So it just gives me enough of a challenge. I probably need to go to the eye doctor. That's probably what I need to do. And I'm sure you can fix me up, but you know, the older you get, the worse things do for sure. All right, we got one side down, guys. Slow but sure. Oh, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Really pretty. So you wanna make sure that when you put your last link on that you have a few links on the end to work with. Cause we're gonna wire wrap this once we get the sorry, or the, excuse me, I keep saying sorry silk, fairy silk through the loops. We're gonna wire wrap the chain onto the fairy silk Oops. so make sure you leave yourself a few links on each end so then we're going to start again we're going to do two count two of the big links out from the leaf one two and on the third one we will put our first jump ring That's straight. Good. Okay. So just making sure I have these still in order because I kind of move them around over here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's the next one. We're going to skip one. It's like we did on the other side. And we're basically going to do every other now going, <clears throat> going forward.
I like to just shake them out there, kind of see what we're working with as we go. So let's put our last one on. And now what I want to do is I want to check both ends and see that we have the same amount of length because when I wire wrap it, I want everything to be centered where I put it. So let's see. So we have one, two large links left on this side. And we have a few more than that over here. One, two. So what we can do, we can just cut this. We have a third one. So that's where those heavy duty pliers that I was talking about earlier come in handy. You just snip that last link off. I just put a, a slit in it with my, a cut into it with my pliers and then just open and close, opening it up. All right, great. So now what I want to do is I want to get all of my jump rings kind of in the same, hanging in the same vicinity here. So I want to put, what I want to do is I want the fairy silk to be running behind, through the jump rings, but behind the uh, chain. Okay, so what I want to do is I have my, my dangle hanging here with my jump ring, but I want to raise that jump ring up above the, just kind of let it have air above the chain. So say for instance, if you're looking at it, you're going to leave area like that above it with your fingers and you're going to take your fairy silk Let's just take that little bit of uh, fray off the end here. It's not frayed, it's the seam. And you're going to put that through your link. And as you go up, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to just kind of lift that, cir lift that jump ring up toward the back and put your, make sure you have it straight. There we go and thread your sari silk through. Oh, there we go. Yeah, these nails, I just got these nails and they're kind of giving me a little bit of an argument. Okay, next one. So we're hanging there. Push it up toward the back to give yourself some room to put your fairy silk through. And this is like the easiest way to do it. The first one I made, ugh. I really just was like laying the sari silk in the chain there and trying to put the loop around, open and closing the jump ring around the sari or the silk and the chain. It was just like a, it was a little bit of a nightmare. So <laughs> this is what I found that works the best. So let's put the sari silk here and just we want to make sure as we're putting it through and further down your chain that your opposite end here that we started with that it is not uh, coming out. Coming off. So which we have enough we have enough fairy silk hanging there that uh you know, it should be fine. So we're pulling that and up, pushing toward the back, putting the end through. These ends do make it very nice the way that they're sewn to make things a little bit easier to get through, to make the, the fairy silk easier to put through the rings. Okay, pull that through. On to the next side. And like I said, as I'm doing this, I'm not hyper to what, where the, the rings are laying right now with the, the dangles. You know, it just, I'm getting it through the rings and then I'm going to adjust things as I need to once I get everything <clears throat> strung on to the silk. almost there we're just like I said just pushing this up and back the jump ring oops 
and that happens. Especially when you have nails that are driving you crazy. <laughs> All right, that, two more. Yep, completely missed that. <laughs> All right, so, okay, one more here, guys. And again, we're getting that through there. All right, so kind of going to bring that to the middle a little bit here so we don't have to worry about either end coming off. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to straighten out, have everything so I can get everything where I want it to be laying. So I want things, I want my chain to be in front of my fairy silk. So I'm just kind of pulling those rings and the chain around the front as we go here. So what we're going to do here after we get this straightened out to where we want it, where everything's kind of hanging, we're going to wire wrap and the ends of the chain onto the fairy silk. Kind of just getting these in order. Just to make sure everything's gonna hang all right once we get it. Yeah, and I think we're gonna be okay. Yep. All right. Looks good, looks good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire wrap this first end on, and then we can work toward the opposite end. I just want to make sure I'm doing this end first one of the ends first because you don't want buckling in your chain. You want it to hang nice and straight. So I am going to use a little bit of 26 gauge wire for that. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning, but if you just have a little bit of 24 or 26 gauge, it makes the wire wrapping a little bit easier on the, we're wrapping the chain to the uh, fairy silk. Okay, so what I'm going to do here as I'm going to take the end of my wire, I'm going to put it through the last link in the chain here. I'm going to lay it across the top. And I want my chain to be laying on top of my fairy silk. And I know it's hard to see with my fingers, guys, in the way. But that kind of gives you an idea. And then I'm going to take the bottom wire and start wrapping. This is the hardest one is to get these first, this first few wraps in. Especially this first one is the hardest because I want to make sure I get it nice and snug. So I'm just kind of bringing that around, oh, tightening it up a little bit as I go. Okay. And we want to make sure and pull that other one, that other wire around so that doesn't pop off the end, that the chain doesn't pop off the end of it. And I'm holding on to that end because that gives you like a really nice, um, fulcrum to be able to wrap the rest of the wire around. If you just had an end that you had already pushed down, everything would spin and you wouldn't be able to get a nice tight wrap. So I'm just going to wrap this around a few times. Okay. However far up you want to go, but I'm going probably about a quarter of an inch, half of an inch, like that, probably a quarter of an inch. And so I got that wrapped as far as I wanted to go. Now I'm going to go back because I want to make sure that I kind of get a little bit more of a metal look there. So I'm going to layer this wire as I go back down just to kind of give it a nice finished look. So we're going to wrap right back down the length of the fairy silk. Okay. 
Okay, almost there. And I'm just moving this wire a little bit out of the way so I can keep working my way down. Okay, and I just like the look of that a little bit better. Kind of gives you more of a um, finished look, like I said, it's just nicer appearance. All right, so now that we have that last wrap around there, we're going to cut our ends. That's a little bit wonky here while you're first getting everything together, guys. So don't be discouraged. And I'm just gonna cut my ends here and push those down because we have that now linked in. There's our other end. Good. Right there, we're just gonna kinda, and I'm gonna just kinda shape this a little bit and get it straightened out the way I want it. There you go, you got a nice wrapped end to, to link your chain to your fairy silk. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to work our way down here. Now guys, here's the decision. As you go, you can decide to wire wrap down. If you want to so say for instance I wrapped here if I want to wrap a section here wrap a section here I can myself personally I like the look of it just to be um, kind of open there without wire wraps in between so as I go down here I'm just kind of keeping this taut you can see I have a hold of it I got it taut there and I'm just gonna hold it here I mean let's try one of our clips here and see if that helps Probably won't, but let's see. I don't think these want to cooperate with me today is what I think the problem is. Ouch. There. Okay. So now we have that side taut. And we're going to work our way down here. Same concept. Kind of getting everything wrapped around. And we can go back and fluff up this fairy silk here when we're done, guys in the back. Once we have everything kind of together, we can go back and fluff it up and give it a really pretty look. We've kind of gotten it in here a little bit in half. And again, I'm sorry if I have that off, but I'm just trying to get this straight, looking at everything to kind of see, okay, where's my chain coming from? I'm going to make sure that everything is running straight. Okay. There we go. And now I know where I want to wrap that. So let me cut another piece of 26 gauge wire. I'm going to give myself about 14 inches. Again, I always take more than I actually need just to make sure that I don't run out. And if I want to do any extra wraps, I can. So that needs to go back around. Okay, so again, I'm pulling that taut to get these guys up around. Now, as you're swinging your, your um, piece around, you know, your chain may get put in different areas, but it'll always come back to the front for you because that's the way that we wired it on. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do our other side. I feel confident that that's a good spot for it. So I'm going to run my wire through that link. I'm going to lay this perpendicular to the fairy silk. And I'm going to put our first wrap on. And again, I'm just holding this snug as I'm getting that wrap around there. I'm going to turn it this way because I am right-handed. Make it a little easier on myself. Oh, 
whoops, where are you? There we go. Okay. And again, your first wrap's going to give you a little bit of a, a fight to get it nice and taut, tight in there. I'm going to go through that loop again. Just to make sure that, and be careful if you're doing that because you want to make sure you don't kink your wire as it's going through. Okay, because it's very easily done. And we're just going to wrap our way up the fairy silk to give us approximately the same size that we have on the other side, the same width of, of wire. Just keeping it nice and tight as you're wrapping around. This is also, I mean, it's a, a, a strong, sturdy way to attach your chain to your fairy silk, but also, you know, if you use the coordinating color, it really adds a little bit to it as far as the look, <clears throat> as far as the look goes. Okay. So get that one more wrap around there, and then we're going to start our way back down like we did on the other side. Let's just make sure that our wraps are around the same size, and they are. Okay. And I'm just, like I said, I'm holding tight here on our end. I'm kind of having it laying straight down against the fairy silk. It just makes it a little easier to hold on to everything. And just wrapping around. Back down. Okay. All right. So let's trim that. Push our end in. Push that down on just a smidge. Just kind of straightening it out a little bit, giving it a nicer look. I'm going to cut just a little bit more off this end, though. Doesn't want to lay down nice for me. There we go. That'll be better. Okay. So let's take our other end here and trim that and flatten it off. That one just popped up on me again. Okay. And we'll trim this end and snug it down in there. Okay. All right. So now we have our basic piece. We can get all of this chain straightened out. And that's the. There we go. Here's the front for us. And there's your chain. The one that I made, it hangs a little bit more in front, but this one hangs a little bit below, but I still like the look of it. And like I said, as we go through, we can kind of fluff this up if we want to, but I really like the look of that. I just think it's very, very pretty and elegant. Okay guys, so we're that far. So now what we need to do is decide what length we want our piece to be. So I, I like around an 18 inch length for these necklaces so they lay nicely on your neck you can see that would lay nicely and in a nice area on your neck so we have approximately for our piece we have about 12 inches now of chain and wire wrap so off of 18 that's six inches so that would be which we need to take so that's six more inches that we're going to need, and then we'll have to take an inch off for the clasp because our clasp is an inch long. So we want the total of our necklace to be 17 inches. So we're going to do two and a half inches per side. So let's just, let's put this down here. I have a, I'm going to move this back just a smidge 
So you can see I do have a measure on my desk. So we want about two and a half inches. So I'm gonna give ourselves three. So we have area to, we're gonna need to wire wrap the ends. So let's give ourselves three inches per side. Cause we're gonna need to wire wrap the ends to be able to link in the clasp. So let's do our three inches on this side. And snip that. Now, all there is to this is we are going to wrap the ends with our 26 gauge wire. We're going to take another long piece, again, 12, 14 inches, something like that. And I'm going to move this up back up just a smidge, guys. Hope you don't mind. <coughs> Trim that. And we're going to do the same exact process. We're going to start a little bit in, maybe like a half an inch from the end. That's why we give ourselves a little extra layer wire across the fairy silk and start wrapping. So, let's see, where are we? There we are. Okay. And give yourself grace on these first few wraps, guys, because it can be infuriating a little bit when you're first starting to do them all right so we got a good four wraps around there just to give us a nice secure start and again I have this wire the end wire laying flat here to give me some leverage so I'm just gonna work my way up the wire and I'm trying to keep things as close as possible although I will be running back down it once we make the loop and we're just gonna do and this is a little harder to wrap because you just have this little end here. It's a little harder than the other one was. But what I said, like I said, we're going to go back down over it. So with our wire, so you can just kind of work your way up loosely or however on the first wrap. Not loosely, but things don't have to be as tight against each other lengthwise. Okay, so that's a long enough piece for me. And I know I'm going to fill that in. So what I'm going to do here, <coughs> pardon me, is snip the remaining sorry silk, or you call them the sorry silk, it's fairy silk, guys. The silk off the end and kind of just clean that up a little bit. And what I like to do, you want the back to look just as nice as the front does. So I like to put a bead on the end oops, of the silk. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pliers and you're going to make this vertical to your piece, okay? See how I did that? And what then you're going to do, I'm gonna take my straighteners over this just a hair. And you're gonna put a bead on the end. Let's put one of our beautiful fire polish on the end. And keep in mind, your beads are going to add a little bit of length, but you can see how I did that. I just had that, per I had that uh, vertical piece, and now I just put the fire polish that's sitting right on the end. Okay, so we made our 90 degree angle. We're going to pop our uh, run those pliers in. We're going to go over top of the pliers, rotate them across and then I'm going to grab our chain nose pliers and hold on to our loop and just wrap it down like we would normally do with a uh, wrap loop okay I'm just gonna bulk that up just a hair because I like to look of it being a little bit fuller. And then what I like to do, guys, is I hang on to this and then I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna wrap it around. I might even use my fingers here. Um, our bead on the end, just to kind of give it a little interest. I'm gonna put it around it and then I'm gonna bring it to the bottom of that bead and then I'm gonna wrap the rest of the way down, okay? And kind of fill in that area that we had from before 
Where are we guys? Okay. I'm just working my way down here now. Okay, almost there. And where our bottom is here. And just be careful when you're working with this thin wire because it can get brittle and break on you if you're too rough on it. So just make sure that you're um, being careful, not overworking it. And I just wrapped back up because I like the look. I want it to be messy. I like it to be full. I like it to be messy. That's my personal preference. It doesn't have to be anything that's too set in a certain way and then I'm just going to loop around again give us an X in the front but again this is all preference if you just want to do the one wrap go for it okay so I want to make sure I have this I'm going to pull this just snug just a smidge and then bring it in there we go got it and so now guys we have a loop that we can hook anything we want into but we're going to link a clasp into it, of course, but that's how you make a basic end for any kind of uh, textile, any kind of ribbon or lace, or you can, you know, there are the glue on ends that you could use. If you prefer that, you can certainly use a glue on end. Um, there are collapsible clasps, that you can put on there, like ribbon clamps or things like that. This is just my preference. That way it's handmade. It looks handmade because it is. Okay, so look at that guys. I'm really happy with that. And that gives you just a really, just a really pretty pop for the back of the necklace. All right, so let's do one more here. Again, I'm going to turn the necklace this way because I am right-handed. I'm going to take a long piece of wire. Go up to the end, leave yourself about a half an inch, lay your wire across. Do your first wrap around. I'm going to take this one on the back here and just loop it a couple times. And then start wrapping. Getting your first loops in there. Those are the tough ones. We're going to do the same thing on this side that we did on the other side. I like to hit into things with my wire all the time, so <laughs> I have to kind of move stuff out of the way. So we're just building our way up here. Okay. And I've got about the same height so far, I believe. Yes, I do, I'm good. So we're going to cut that fairy silk. And I said it right this time, miracles happen. And cut your end and then again you're going to turn it so it is then vertical to the the fairy silk like that put your fire polish on the end or whatever bead you choose We're going to take our chain nose pliers, make our 90 degree bend, if I can talk. Round those up over, spin your pliers across, and back to your chain nose, and just wire wrap 
down. Okay, I'm going to switch to my fingers like I did last time. And we're just wrapping that across the bead, going to the bottom. Whoops, spinning a little bit there. Going to the bottom and just spinning, or er, spinning, <laughs> wrapping the way, rest of the way down to cover up any of those loose ends and to give us a nice finished look. couple here and again this is my preference I like messy messy wraps and do you do you And it depends on what I'm working on. Some things I don't do messy wraps, but in general, I like the look of it, especially with this technique, because I have to tell you, sometimes this technique gets the best of me. I get frustrated and... Okay. I'm just gonna squeeze this up a little bit. And I'm really not liking how this is looking right now, probably what I would do is go back and redo this but for time's sake we'll just stick with it and because I know you get the idea I'm just trimming that end going to try to neaten this up just a smidge this end off here okay so we're just gonna snip this and we're gonna add our clasp and I'm just gonna use a couple of those oval jump rings to add the clasp okay bring two of those up At least I thought I did. Let's do another get wrap another one. Oh Lord. Okay. So let's open our jump rings. I know this is quite the project, guys, but I often find myself doing more difficult pro projects. I just I like the challenge. I like the investment of the time and the and the frankly the way that they look when we're done when I'm done with them. A lot of steps, but those steps individually aren't too difficult. And again, we're going to link our jump ring into our loop we made and hook onto our clasp. So the next thing we're going to do is just kind of straighten everything out now that we are done moving it around so much. And we're going to see, this is the front here. And so basically I just kind of mess with the chain until I get it where I want it. Flip, flip my, my dangles around the front because I know this is going to be my front. There we go. That one's looking pretty good though. I think we've got it. So there you go guys. There's your necklace finished. Which I'm really happy with. I think it came out really pretty. But the next thing we're going to do here guys before we wrap things up is we're going to make a quick earring to go with our piece. So I'm going to move this up here out of the way a little bit. 
And just as a reminder, this is the earrings that we're making. It's just wire wrapping, um, basic earring. I just have it in two different pieces. I find if you do hinge your earrings like this, it gives you a little bit of play. I know when I first started, I was making everything more like one piece. And it just kind of is stiff and moves there. And just putting that little bit of a hinge on it was so when you move around, you have movement really adds to your earring. So that basically gives you an idea on what we're going to do. Now we're using different beads than what we're showing there, of course. So like I said, I picked these out ahead to keep things simple. So there's our... Whoops. I should have a fourth one here. Oh, here it is. I think, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this bead and the this bead for the bottom. I'm going to take in and do a couple spacer beads between there. And I do have I, would, I do have two larger rondelles here I have that I may use on the top. So the first thing we're gonna do is that is not 20 gauge or 22 gauge. I'm gonna cut myself one more piece here. Not sure what happened there. Okay, so we're going to take our 22 gauge wire and we're going to do what we did earlier with the loops. We're just going to wind it around the barrel of our round nose pliers two times, bend it vertically, bring it through the bottom, bring it through the top, through the bottom, and then we have our loop there. We're going to grab with our chain nose pliers and our nylon jaw pliers and pull. Okay, let's do one more because we're going to need one more. At least then that's done. <coughs> we're going to need our round nose pliers back and give us two loops on top of each other. Vertical, down through the top, up through the bottom, and again with the nylon jaw pliers and the chinos pliers. Okay, we have those done. So what we're going to do with that, we're going to put our teardrop bead on. our spacer bead and our rondelle. And that's gonna be our bottom part. I did do quite a bit of wire wrapping at the top of the other one. So we may do that as well. So again, chain nose, we're gonna do our 90 degree. We're doing a wrap loop. Put your round nose pliers in, up and over to the side. There you go. And grab with our chinos plier and wrap around. So it looks like I may have enough wire to do a little bit of a bundle here at the top of the. So I think that's what we'll do. Just kind of give us some interest there. There we go. Let's put one more wrap here. There we go. See, and that gives us a nice little bundle at the top. Hopefully I have enough wire on the other one to do this. I should. Okay, let's just... And those are those six inch pieces that I cut, guys, from earlier. And just tuck that in. There's one. These are just quick little earrings, like I said. Um, I don't think we need anything too in-depth with the... I think we have a busy enough necklace where, you know, it'd be nice to have a little bit simpler of an earring. 
that. Do our right angle and our run those in and across. Wrap around down. And then, like I said, I wrap back up, wrap back down. I like it to look like it has a little bundle of wire at the top of it. So that gives you an idea. Okay. We're just going to trim that. Flatten it out. So it's nice in there. doesn't get a hold of anybody's clothes. Sorry guys, I'm having to bring that a little bit closer. There we go. Now we're just gonna make a loop at the bottom so we can link this into our piece. So we're just gonna start out by doing our angle. I'm putting in our round nose plier and doing our wrap loop. Okay. And we're gonna make sure before we wrap this around that we hook in our bottom piece of our earring. Okay. Put that on. Grab your loop at the bottom and wrap around a few times. Now I've got three wraps there that I'm doing. I'm gonna snip that off. And flatten it out. Then I'm just gonna put some, let's see, we're gonna do a brown pearl on there. And a rondel, really pretty. These are so pretty, these crystal rondels. And then a piece of our fire polish for the top, okay? And just the same thing, just do a wrap loop to the side. And do our loop over the top and over to the side and wrap. And we're going to do one more here, guys. And also, you will need your um, ear wires for this as well, which is a kind of a no-brainer, but <laughs> I didn't mention them at first, so I wanted to make sure and tell you. All right, so there's one down. Let's grab some ear wires. couple gold ones that will coordinate. Just simple. There we go. And we'll just put this one on so that one is completely done. And just open up your ear wire. And place your loop on. And that is one earring down. Only one more earring, guys. I know I've kept you a long time today. All right. So we're gonna make our loop by doing a 90 degree angle. I know we've done so many of these by now. I'm sure you're sick of it. <laughs> I'm sure you know it by now anyway. And then we're going to make sure before we wrap that loop that we put our end in. Because I cannot tell you how many times I have not done that when I make pieces. <laughs> you go back and you're like, oh, I have to do that all over again. Okay, grab your loop. A few wraps around. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we got that. Let's put on our brown pearl. We decided we didn't want to use the little ones. Our rondelle and our fire polish. Okay, and then we're just going to make our last wrap loop, if you can believe it, guys. We're on our last one. Up and over the top the side and wrap it around 
did I do? Yeah, I went back up on that one. Okay. All right, let's trim this. Push that end down. I always have to tweak things, you know, when I'm working on it. I'm sure you all do the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so there is our second earring. We're just going to put our ear wire on. And if you can believe it, guys, that is everything. That is all. We've did it. We've finished it. <laughs> We've made wrap loops till the cows come home. And there you go. And there's your finished piece with your earrings. And I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I appreciate everyone stopping by and watching the video with me. And I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time on my social media. I'd be glad to help you out. But I thank you guys and take care and have a wonderful day.